food shortages, disruptions in the supply chain, and orders to shelter in place, it's no wonder that food storage is a hot topic. After seeing our family's food storage challenge during the coronavirus quarantine, I've been getting lots of questions about food storage. Maybe you've known that having food storage is important, but you just haven't made it a priority in the past. Or maybe until recently you've never even considered the idea of food storage. Either way, now is a fine time to get started, and that's just what I want to help you do. I know if you're here to explore frugal living and personal finance, you might be wondering how this fits in. Well, I can assure you that we'll have more of those regular topics as well, but you might be surprised to see how much money a food storage plan is going to save you on a regular basis. I'm also excited to show you how food storage works as a release valve to relieve financial stress when it's most important for you. Today we'll talk about why you should have food stored, what to do if you don't have space, where you can find the funds to stock up, and a great method for getting started. Then I'll show you how having food storage will lead you to a consistently lower grocery budget. I'm Stephanie from SixFiguresUnder.com where I share frugal inspiration and financial motivation to help you get out of debt and reach your financial goals. Welcome back to all of you in our subscriber community. If you're new here, I would love for you to click that subscribe button and join our community. Okay, first, why should you have food stocked? The stay-at-home orders during the coronavirus pandemic are a sober example of how food storage can be helpful, but there are a lot of other reasons too. Whether it's a job loss during an economic downturn, or a sudden need to care for a seriously ill family member, or a natural or political disaster, having enough food on hand meets one of your most basic needs. It not only keeps your family fed, it also alleviates stress during an already difficult time. Imagine the comfort and security your family will feel knowing that no matter what else might be happening, you have plenty of food and drink on hand. Now imagine the opposite, the stress and uncertainty of not being sure how your family will eat on top of all the other challenges you're facing. And having food stored doesn't just help out when disaster strikes, it's a day-to-day -day blessing. Being able to shop your pantry instead of running to the store saves so much time and money. When you have to run out to the store for just one thing, you have to pay top dollar because you need it now. Plus, you're tempted to impulse buy. On the other hand, when you have food stored, you can wait for a sale before you stock up. You'll never have to pay full price again. Now I hear what some of you are saying. What if I don't have anywhere to keep my food storage? That's a question I get a lot. In a later video, we'll talk about detailed ideas of where to store your food, what containers are best, and how to rotate it. But for just a minute, let's talk about where to store food. Just a quick overview. A lot of people tune out any talk of food storage because they don't think they have anywhere to put it. There may not currently be room to add a three month supply of food to your house at this very minute, but I do believe that where there's a will, there's a way. If having food storage is important to you, you can make it happen. You may have to make a choice. You may need to do some decluttering and downsizing in other areas of your life, but you can make it work. You can fit a one year food supply for one person under a twin size bed. True story. Sure, there may be something else stored under that bed right now, but does that bring you the kind of security you get knowing that your kids won't starve? Could you store what's under your bed in the garage instead and keep food under the bed? Do you have a coat closet that you could take over with food storage? It might not be the most glamorous solution, but if food storage is a priority, you can make it happen. When we lived in my in-laws basement while we were paying off debt, we kept our food storage in buckets and boxes stacked from floor to ceiling against a wall in the kids' bedroom. Was it beautiful, Pinterest-worthy setup? Heavens no! I don't even think I have a picture of it, as it was far from glamorous, and who knew I would be writing or talking about it years later. But being self-reliant was more of a priority than having drool-worthy decor in the kids' bedroom. Okay, another question that I often get, where do I get the money to start building up food storage? Before you decide that getting food storage will be too expensive, let's put things into perspective. This is food that could potentially save your family's life. This food means that sometime down the road you won't have to decide between paying the mortgage and feeding your family. 
If your current grocery budget doesn't have a lot of wiggle room to get an extra month's worth of food, you'll need to find another way to fund your food storage. What expenses in your budget are less of a priority to you? Do you have some clutter around the house that you've been meaning to sell that could give you a chunk of money to get started with? Of course you want to be prudent in your quest to build up food storage. Don't go into debt to stock your food storage in a hurry. It's something that you do gradually but intentionally over time. To be successful your food storage needs to be a priority and you need a plan for getting there. That's what we're going to put together today. There are lots of ways to build up your food storage and lots of methods and systems of what to store and how to rotate it. You could just buy extra every time you shop. One for now, two for later. This will increase what you have in your pantry, which is a great start, and you already know it's what your family's used to eating. You could go off the recommended per month annual amounts. For example, it's a common recommendation to store 300 to 400 pounds of grain, 60 pounds of beans, 60 pounds of sugar, 16 pounds of powdered milk, 8 pounds of salt, 2.5 gallons of oil to ensure that a person gets enough calories and nutritional variety for a year. I'll cover long term food storage in a future video because there are some strong reasons to have it, but you'll probably want much more variety, especially since you're relying on your food storage for a long time. Today we're going to focus on the method that I call the menu plus math method. It's a simple method that I know can work for you. You'll be storing what you eat and eating what you store. This isn't the type of food storage that you just tuck away for a rainy day. This is food storage that you're actively eating and replenishing during your normal grocery shopping. So how long should your food storage last? Our family is aiming at a year's worth of food stored. If you're new to the idea of food storage, then having a year supply will probably sound absolutely outrageous. Food for a year surely sounds daunting at first, so let's just start with a month, then work up to three months. If you want to continue from there, I'll have some tips and tools in future videos to help you get there. But even having food to feed your family for a month is a huge accomplishment and will bring you so much peace when a disaster happens. Okay, let's make a custom food storage plan for your family. I created a set of printable food storage planning worksheets that will help you design your own food storage plan. I'll leave a link for you to get them below. You can print them out in color or black and white. We're actually in the process of creating a really neat spreadsheet that does a lot of this and a whole lot more, but until then these worksheets will be great. You can decide the time frame you want to create your food storage for. For this example, we'll just use a month. Once you've accomplished that, it's easy to scale your plan to three months or longer. Or if you want to start smaller, start with a week or two. This is totally flexible. Okay, once you've decided how many weeks that you're going to do your food storage plan for, we're going to figure out how many days that is. So just figure that out right here. And we're going to plug that number of days in right here in each of these lines. And then I want you to look at these recipe brainstorming sheets. There's one for breakfast, lunches, dinners, and desserts or snacks. Okay, we'll start with breakfast. We want to focus on meals that your family loves, not random recipes from a food storage cookbook that use ingredients that you've never tried. Obviously, if you have fresh foods on hand when disaster strikes, you'll want to eat those first. If you have a garden, then you can supplement your food storage plan with produce you grow. But for your food storage plan, think of meals that don't require fresh foods. Get creative with how you can substitute other options, like fruits or vegetables that are frozen or commercially canned or home canned or dehydrated. I bet when I said frozen, some of you thought, yeah, but what if you don't have power? It's true that some of the situations where you might be eating from your food storage may also be situations where you don't have electricity, but that won't necessarily be the case. I think it's fine to include frozen food in your food storage plan, especially when you're just getting started. As far as cooking and preparing food, you might eventually want to figure out how to adapt your food storage meals to be able to be prepared without electricity, and it's good if you plan for at least some of your meals to not require electricity, but for now, just getting something stored is the most important part. So with that all out of the way, start by writing down seven different breakfasts that will be a part of your food storage. If you can only think of five, then that's fine, just go with that. Some basic ideas to get your wheels turning from our family breakfast menu. We've got oatmeal with raisins, cream of wheat with honey and fruit, 
scrambled eggs with salsa and fruit, granola with milk and fruit, pancakes with syrup and applesauce, cold cereal with milk, sourdough waffles with fruit. Once you've got your five or seven or ten breakfast recipes written down, go back to the first sheet and we're going to put, let's say we have seven, we're going to put seven in here and then we'll calculate how often we'll be eating each one of those recipes. So for our example, we'll be eating for 28 days divided by seven different recipes. We'll be eating each recipe four times. The calculation is pretty basic when you're just planning for a month. Okay, so we know that each of these meals we're going to eat four times. Now get out your recipe sheet. We're going to print one of these for each breakfast. Now for each breakfast, write down all of the ingredients, including spices and pantry staples. And in this column, write how much of that ingredient you need for one meal. Now in this column, we're going to multiply that by how many times we're going to have this meal if you're preparing a one month food storage plan, multiply the ingredient amounts for those seven meals by four to get four weeks. There you are. You have a rotating seven meal breakfast menu with a little simple math. You've turned it into a list of everything you need for 28 breakfasts. Obviously, if you're doing a three months food storage, you would multiply those seven meals by 13 to get what you need for 91 breakfasts. If you're doing a one year food storage, multiply the ingredients for those seven meals by 52 to have what you need for a year of breakfast. You get the picture. Now we'll do the same thing for dinner. Write down seven dinners that your family loves that can be made without fresh ingredients or with substitutions. Here are some ideas. Beef stew, taco soup, spaghetti with canned or frozen vegetables, shepherd's pie, Hawaiian haystacks, broccoli chicken rice bake, stroganoff with canned or frozen vegetables. Now for each dinner, grab one of these recipe sheets and write down all of the ingredients, including spices and pantry staples. If you don't want to plan on the same seven meals all year, list the ingredients for 14 meals and multiply by 26. Sounds simple enough, right? Now what about lunch? Well, you can do the same thing for lunch if you want, but if you know us, we're big fans of the All-American Peanut Butter and Jelly Sandwich. We make sure that we have the ingredients to make bread in our food storage, as well as peanut butter and jam. We also have other sandwich options like tuna or egg salad. Dessert? You bet! If you're eating from your food storage, chances are good that your life is in a bit of an upheaval of sorts. There's nothing wrong with having some comfort food on hand. In fact, I think it's very wise. I learned during our food storage trial run, AKA our quarantine food storage challenge, that I didn't have enough chocolate chips on hand. You decide how often you want a treat or dessert, whether it's every day, twice a week, you decide. Hey, there's also a sheet here for you to list your dessert ideas. Here are some of ours. Brownie mix, that's the first one on the list for a reason. Pudding mix, chocolate no-bake cookies, cobbler with dehydrated fruit, pineapple upside down cake, oatmeal raisin cookies, peanut butter bars, and just like you did with the other meals, take one of these recipe sheets for each one of those desserts. Even if it's a brownie mix, you still need to have your oil and water and egg for each of those. Now that you have a list of all the ingredients you'll need for your food storage plan, it's time to make a master list of ingredients that will be in your food storage. You want a list where you can keep track of how much you want to store of each item based on your goal time frame, how much you have already stored in your pantry, and how much you still need to reach your goal. So that's what this inventory sheet is for. This is one thing that will be easier with the spreadsheet version, but for now, you can use this inventory, and I would use pencil. As you write each ingredient, then over here you'll put how much you need. So as you go through each recipe, you'll be changing this amount um, for the ingredients that are in more than one recipe. For example, we have raisins for some of our breakfasts, and we also have raisins for our oatmeal raisin cookies that are in our desserts. So I would just erase this here and 
update it with the new amount, adding all the amounts from the separate recipes. Okay, let me tell you some of the perks of this method of food storage. First, you'll be intentionally planning for meals, not just food. So you'll have all the ingredients you need. You'll be completely stocked with your meals that your family loves and enjoys eating. You won't need to run to the store to grab anything. Also, when you have a buffer of food storage like this, you can restock your items on your own terms, like waiting until it's on sale, rather than buying what you need right now and having to pay whatever the store prices are. Another perk with the menu plus math method is that there's no questioning how long your food storage will last with your normal eating habits and portions versus the great unknown of how long random buckets of long-term food storage like wheat and beans and rice will last. And don't worry, once you have your food storage, that doesn't mean you have to eat just your food storage. You aren't limited to these seven meals indefinitely. Maybe once or twice a week you can eat one of your meals from your food storage, but make other fresh meals like you normally make the other days. Not only does that allow you to rotate through your food storage rather than just have it sit on your shelf indefinitely, but it gives you a quick, easy meal for those crazy nights when you're in a rush. We've got a lot of those. Okay, I know we just talked about a lot. I don't want you to get burned out or discouraged. Remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. You don't have to get all this food tomorrow. Pick up some on each shopping trip. Get in the habit of adding these items to your regular grocery trips. Okay, this is the beginning of a series to help you get started with food storage. So there's a lot more to come. In future videos, we'll talk about where and how to store your food, We'll talk about expiration dates and how to rotate your food storage so nothing goes to waste. We'll cover those really long-term food storage items that last for 30 years or more and the best, least expensive places to get it. We'll hit on other details like what if you're only used to eating fresh food and what if you don't have power. Let me know your specific questions so I can be sure to cover them later on in the series. Okay, that's all for today, guys. See you next time.